chapter 14, standing on the solar bark. Mathematics prepares the soul for the study of intelligibles. Therefore, Iamblichus provides the following interpretation of the Pythagorean cryptic utterance. Sumbalon, do not cut in two what is on the road. A long quote here. Philosophy indeed, it seems, is a road. The utterance means then, choose that philosophy and that road to wisdom in which you will not cut in two, in which you will propound, not contradictions, but firm and unchanging truths, strengthened by scientific demonstrations through sciences, mathematon, and contemplation, theorius, that is, philosophize in the Pythagorean manner, Pythagoricos, that philosophy which travels through corporeal things and sense objects, which more recent thinkers immoderately adopt, thinking God and the qualities and soul and the virtues are simply all prime causes in reality, our body. Thinking God and the qualities and soul and the virtues and simply all prime causes in reality are a body is slippery and easily reversible. Witness the very different accounts of it. Whereas the philosophy which progresses through immaterial, eternal, intelligible objects that always remain the same and do not admit in themselves of destruction or change, this philosophy, like its subject matter, is unerring and firm. End quote. The, uh, <coughs> the aim of this firm and perennial philosophy consists in contemplating the one, the goal of all contemplation, thus being able to see from here as if from a watchtower, God and all in this train of God. This train of God is analogous to the train of Ra, who moves standing on the solar bark with his entourage of flame. The gods who are on the prow of the solar bark include Isis, Seth and Horus, and those on the stern, Hu, creative word Logos, Seer, Wisdom, Perception, and Ra, or Solar Intellect, himself. They are the models of imitation and objects of contemplation for those who approach the solar bark, moving in a circle, i.e. for those who are, in a sense, philosophers. The Roman Emperor Flavius Claudius Julianus describes philosophers, including the Egyptians, who, quote, reckon up the names of not a few wise men among themselves, end quote, the successors of Hermes, as well as the Chaldeans and Assyrians, the successors of Oanes and Balos and Hellenes, and the successors of Chiron, the centaur who taught Achilles and is a prototype of the true spiritual master as follows, quote, the philosophers bid us imitate the gods so far as we can. Mimaeistai, Keluusin, Hemes, Hoi, Philosophoi, Keta, Dunamin, Tus, Theos. And they teach us that this imitation consists in the contemplation of realities. In Theoria, Ton, Onton. And that this sort of study is remote from passion, and as in, is indeed based on freedom from passion. It is, I suppose, evident, even without my saying it. In proportion, then, as we, having been assigned to do the contemplation of realities, attain to freedom from passion, in so far do we become like God. Keta to suton exo moyo mitha to theo. Keta Galileon logos. And that ends the quote. To become like God for the Egyptian priests is to become sunlight. Sun like. To be transform, transformed into Ak, and eventually to be identified with Ra himself. 
according to the Book of Two Ways, produced in the early Middle Kingdom by the 12th Dynasty, 1994 to 1781 BC, priests of the Temple of Thoth in Hermopolis, at least 1400 years before Pythagoras, this is the true mystery of Ra, namely to arrive at the perfect place of a perfect spirit who shall be a god himself. The perfect sage, or rather his transformed Ba, which is analogous to the winged soul of the philosopher in Plato's Phaedrus, is a spirit who knows how to enter the flame, i.e. the intelligible realm, such as the soul of one who knows, and therefore is a holy god in the suite of Thoth. His is the clear way, and his is light. The lover of wisdom, of Seer, who stands on the prow of the solar bark, is a follower of Thoth, and the way of Thoth leads towards the house of Mars. When the initiate restores his primordial noetic nature, and is united with the archetypal source, he can proclaim, I have inherited the horizon of Ra, I am Atu. The deceased or the initiate, who is dead in relation to passions and his lower human self, including the fish-like material body, is united with Ra, and now appears not as a separate individuality, which is annihilated by the spiritual flames during his ascent, but as the immortal solar intellect Ra, the companion of Thoth, and as the traditional iconography depicts, he, as the universal hypostasis of the king, son of Ra, who integrates and unites all multiplicities, stands before Hu and Sia, and other gods at the back of the solar bark. Being in the entourage of flame, he helps to guide the solar bark and conducts the sacred writings to the god Ra. The true Gnostic who knows truth and his own real identity may also be designated as belonging to the entourage of Thoth, which consists of Rit, Rikit, or Rehut, Rekhut, rendered by Leonard H. Lesko as common folk and celebrated ones, respectively. However, the term Rek means knowledge, and Thoth is no less than the supreme master and cause of any knowledge, especially that which concerns the liberation and elevation of the soul, thus putting her in the train of Thoth himself. The dark and mysterious text runs as follows. Quote, you have made the entourage from your common folk. I cause that they reach you. The one who shines in the night is Ra. As for any person who is in his train, he lives forever among the followers of Thoth. It is in the night that he is made to appear, and Osiris is gladdened since he is the unique one who suffered more than he did after having been placed among his followers in the entourage. End quote. Another version is slightly different. Quote, this is the great one who, from whom the sky came to be. As for any person who will be in his followers, he will live in the entourage of Thoth, and he will be made to appear in the night in the joy of Osiris. You are the son of the one who suffers alone. His father has been given to him in his entourage. End quote. In Julian's version of Neoplatonism, inherited from Iamblichus and his school, the undefiled and pure soul, that of Heracles, for instance, is regarded as superior to the purest ether. It was in this perfect condition before the Demiurge sent it to the earth, and again after its philosophical and theurgic return to the Father. Of Heracles, who serves as a model for the philosophical light and ascent, it is said that he has returned one and indivisible to his Father, one and indivisible. 
in the Egyptian Book of Two Ways, the All Lord, the creator Atum Ra, who sets up the king on the earth as his living image, Tut, asserts that whereas the gods are created from his sweat, divine perfume, human beings are from the weeping of his eye. Like tears, they fall down into the material bodies of flesh. However, after making their hearts to cease forgetting the West, i.e. introducing philosophy, as a way of remembrance and homecoming, he opens the path of return leading upwards. Those who travel this path are able to lift up their names to the rays of his face, i.e. to be one, like Osiris in the midst of the Duat, and two, like Ra in the sky. Since the epistrophic movements to the noetic realm presupposes appeasing, harmonizing and transcending of all opposites, the initiate says, I come into the presence of the All Lord. I made the two warriors content, i.e. Horus and Seth, the Pythagorean table of opposites. This harmonization, accomplished through the guidance of Thoth, corresponds to reaching the house of truth and justice, Mart. The Pythagoreans and Plato inherited this idea of setting one's house in order by self-mastery and bringing into tune all parts of the psychosomatic entity, or dismembered Osiris, who must be restored and attuned. Quote, like the proportion of a musical scale, the highest and lowest notes and the mean between them, with all the intermediate intervals. End quote. When all dismembered parts are united in a well-tempered harmony and animated by the theurgic power of Isis and Thoth, the initiate becomes like a living image of the temple-like universal man, instead of many scattered fragments, a house divided. The knowledge which presides over such a transformation is wisdom, accompanied by justice which ensures, according to geometrical proportion, that each part of the whole receives what it is due. At the level of anima mundi, the initiate, who died already before his actual death, i.e. who discovered, awakened and separated his bar from the gross mortal body, is united with Osiris, the king of the intermediate realm. Quote, I stand with Osiris when he stands. O Osiris, your bar comes to you. Open your throat. Take Osiris to Osiris. End quote. He identifies himself with one of the gods who supports the sky and announced the arrival of the solar bark of Ra. Finally, he pronounces another long quote here. I am the follower of Ra who receives his iron, who replaces or adorns the god in the shrine, Horus who ascends to his lord. The seat was hidden in the purification of the chapel of the messenger of the god to her whom he loved. I am the one who rescued Mart after he caused his image to ascend. I am the one who knotted the rope and bound his chapel. The storm was my abomination. I have not been opposed by Ra. I have not been repulsed by him who acts with his hands. I have not walked in the valley of darkness. I have not encountered into the lake of criminals. I have not been in the heat of the striking force of God. The holiness of God is secret. The arms of Geb rise early in the morning. Who will lead the great ones and count children at his prosper time? Thoth is inside the secrets, that he may make offerings to the one who counted millions and who is counted, who opened the firmament and dispelled bleariness from him after I reached him in his seat. I adore Ra that he may listen to me and that he may remove an obstacle for me. I was not turned back from the horizon. I am Ra. I was not boatless in the great crossing. It is he whose face is on his knees who extended his arm. 
since the name of Ra was in my belly, and his rank was in my mouth. I say it to him, and I am the one who hears his words. Adoration to you, O Ra, Lord of the horizon. O Ra, hail to you for whom the sun folk purify themselves, and for whom the sky acts as controller, rather than the great striking force of God which the courses of the rebellious pass. I have come among those who herald Mars. End quote. Hearing this dark and inspiring account, one should remember first that the mythical discourse is woven by images and symbols which might be subjugated to different exoteric and esoteric interpretations, and regarded as being revealed, because the gods wish to teach us in symbolic fashion that we must pluck the fairest fruits from the earth, namely virtue and piety, quoting Julian. Didas conton hemes oime ton theon symbolicos. Second, that it is inseparable from the ritual which serves as a necessary means of elevation for those who, quote, by nature belong to the heavens but have fallen to earth, to reap the harvest of our constitution here on earth, namely virtue and piety, and then strive upwards to the goddess, i.e., the Phrygian mother of the gods who may be equated also to Hathor, Nut, Neath, and Isis of the Egyptians. Or our forefathers, to her who is the principle of all life. End quote. Third, that the Noetic Ra is not identical with the visible Ra. The sun disk, Aten, adored by Akhenaten. For Julian, who follows the ancient traditions of solar theologies, the visible disk of the sun is only third in rank, surpassed as it is by the second sun, Helios Mithras, ruler of the intellectual gods. And the first intelligible sun, which is often identified with the good or the one, as it shows itself in the intelligible realm. The middle and intellectual Helios is regarded, Julian in this respect cites the divine Plato, as... Quote, the offspring of the good, which the good begat in his own likeness, and that what the good is in relation, and that what the good is in relation to pure nous and its objects in the noetic world, such as the sun, in the visible world, in relation to sight and its objects. Therefore, quote, his light has the same relation to the visible world as truth has to the noetic world. End quote. Pros to Noaton Aletheia. The third or visible Helios, nonetheless, is the cause for the visible gods of just as many blessings as the second Helios bestows on the intellectual gods and serves as an anagogic force leading upwards to the invisible principles symbolized by the visible divine form and light. According to the Egyptian New Kingdom theologies, the visible world is heliophany, or manifestation, kaperu, of the solar god himself, whose name is substituted by the term nehe in the Amarna texts. Initially, nehe is the inexhaustible noetic plenitude, out of which the sun allots individual portions of time to everything existing. By seeing the light, both intelligible and sensible, that is God, the eye, including the inner eye of the soul, is created, which is therefore sun-like, Helios, uh, Helio Iades. For the theologians of the 18th dynasty, as for Plotinus, the solarity of the eye, or the illuminated human intellect, which is light out of light, Phos ek photos, guarantees and reveals the inward presence of the divine, because seeing and knowing are one and the same. Seeing is to be, is to be understood in the presence of an intelligible vision, epoptia as well. This possibility of proceeding from inward solarity to inward divinity, 
of reaching Ra through the solar gnosis is denied by Akhenaten, for all except the king himself, who, however, reduces the intelligible dimension of Ra to the visible, Aten. As the Emperor Julian explains, light itself is a sort of incorporeal and divine form. Eidos estin asomaton te theon, a form coextensive with the heavenly bodies. He says, quote, And of light, itself incorporeal, the culmination and flower, so to speak, is the sun's rays. Now the doctrine of the Phoenicians, who were wise and learned in sacred lore, ton phoenikon doxa, sophon tathea kai epistemonon, declared that the rays of light everywhere diffused are the undefiled incarnation of pure intellect. And in harmony with this is our theory, seeing that light itself is incorporeal, if one should regard its fountainhead not as corporeal, but as the undefiled activity of intellect, i.e. Helios, pouring light into its own abode, end quote. While maintaining that the uplifting rays of the sun, quote, are nearly akin to those who yearn to be set free from generation, we ought then to make these visible proofs, these visible things, proofs of his unseen powers, end quote. Since the souls of the blessed philosophers are led upwards by the agency of the invisible, holy, immaterial, divine and pure substance which resides in the rays of Helios, we can speak of the solar philosophy, presided over and directed by Helios Apollo, Atom Ra, Amon Ra, or Horus, along with the great consort goddess, be it Athena, Nath, Hathor or Isis. The solar philosophy is the same as the most holy and secret mysteries of solar rebirth. So Julian continues as follows. Quote, it has also been demonstrated that the God's rays are by nature uplifting, and this is due to his energy, both visible and invisible, by which very many souls have been lifted up out of the region of the senses, because they were guided by that sense which is clearest of all and most nearly like the sun. For when with our eyes we perceive the sun's light, not only is it welcome and useful for our lives, but also, as the divine Plato said when he sang its praises, it is our guide to wisdom. And if I should also touch on the secret teachings of the mysteries, tis Arito Mustagogius, in which the Chaldean, divinely frenzied, celebrated the god of the seven rays. That god, through whom he lifts up to the soul of men, I should be saying what is unintelligible, wholly unintelligible to the common herd, but familiar to the happy theurgists. Theorjoi de Toyus Macariois Gnomrima. End quote.